Alexis Conran on Times Radio. It's that time of the show where we like to remember an influential person we lost during the week. And today we look back on the life of the pioneering surgeon whose work has saved countless lives. Sir Roy Kalmer performed the first successful liver transplant in Europe in 1968. And he died last Saturday at the age of 93. He was born in Richmond. Saroy was an academic child drawn to life sciences. He kept a flock of 40 pigeons at his prep school. And from the age of 12, he knew he wanted to be a surgeon. At the age of 16, Saroy was accepted at Guy's Hospital in London to study medicine. But his interest in transplantation was sparked in 1950 when, as a medical student, he heard that a man roughly his age on the hospital ward would die in two weeks of kidney failure. Sir Roy asked his consultant why they couldn't just give the man a new kidney, but he was batted away at the time. New organs were nearly always rejected. The real breakthrough came with the development of immunosuppressant, which Sir Roy pioneered, drugs that would dampen the immune system's response so it would not reject transplanted organs. Here is Sir Roy Calm talking about the effect of cyclosporine, a drug he introduced into the clinical care. It was really a watershed in transplantation because prior to cyclosporine, there were only about 10 centres in the world seriously doing transplants. After cyclosporine, uh, within two or three years, there were more than 1,000 because cyclosporine made uh, kidney transplantation respectable. About 50% of kidneys were working at the end of a year. But after cyclosporine, uh, it went up to more than 80%. He was later described as a giant in the transplant world and his technique is still used even for today's patients. Let's welcome to the show Professor John Walwork, uh, chairman of the Royal Papworth Hospital who performed the world's first heart, lung and liver transplant alongside Sir Roy. Professor, thank you for giving us your time. Yeah, good afternoon. Tell us, what kind of person was uh, Sir Roy? Oh, uh... He was uh, a, a person who, when he entered a room, you knew he was there, um, and he was driven so that he had determination to do what he thought was right, sometimes not necessarily what other thought was right, but he, he thought he was right, and he was absolutely committed to, to uh, reaching his aims so that he was a highly driven person. He was also very competitive as well, so all these things combined for him to go down a track to keep going down that track until he'd proven or otherwise that he was uh, he was right or wrong. It, it seems like a very competitive field, but you did work together in that world's first heart, lung and liver transplant. Tell us about that event, because I believe Sir Roy brought his own team to look after the liver and you were looking after the heart and the lungs. Not quite, but anyway, yes. Right. So we, we did that in December 1986, and the operation took place at Papworth Hospital, but clearly uh, I didn't have the skills to do a liver transplant, and Sir Roy didn't have the skills to do a heart and lung transplant. So the operation we, we did together, and you're right, he had his own operating team there, and then afterwards we shared the care of the patient uh, in our ICU at Papworth, uh, uh, along with Roger Williams and his team, who were the liver people uh, in London that used to look after a lot of Roy's uh, post-operative transplant patients. So it was a combined team effort of really quite a large team. Uh, But in the operating room, we had uh, uh, a group of people from his his team and my team, and we, uh, we worked well together. And, I mean, his contribution has uh, left him described as a giant in the transplant world. Did it all yeah. centre around that use of the cyclosporine? Was, was that the key? Well, that was one of, the, one of the issues. No, it really began when he started looking at a drug called Imuran. Uh, in, in the, when he was in the, in America. And, of course, that was one of the first drugs, along with steroids, that stopped people rejecting organs. And then Roy, along with Tom Starzl, were the two people in the world who really put liver transplantation on the map. And that, that I think, was where he began being being outstanding in terms of a, a transplant surgeon. Sacrosporin was developed in his, his unit by David White, who they were given this drug by Sandos, which was now called Novartis, but Sandos, and they thought it was an antibiotic. And David uh, did some experiments and showed that this drug was a really very good immunosuppressant. And so Soroy 
uh, using his, his pretty determined personality, persuaded Sandos uh, to develop this drug, which they thought was going to be a niche market, uh, and, in, and in fact was was wonderful for transplantation, but also wonderful for for, for Sandos as well. So he he uh, he persuaded them to do that, and that those various events were the game changers that made Roy ab absolutely special in the transplant world. Finally, Professor, how how will you remember Sir Roy Khan? Well. Well, you know, Roy, Roy, uh, um, I, I remember him skiing. Uh, he was a very competitive skier. So he would take a group of people from Oxford and Cambridge skiing every year. And they were, he would force some of them who weren't very, very good to follow him, which was sometimes a bit of a disaster. <laughs> Sounds petrifying. <laughs> it was. Uh, but I was a very bad skier. So some of them decided to hive off into a subgroup following me as well, which was probably a bit, a bit safer. Uh, and I remember playing tennis with Roy. He was highly competitive at playing tennis uh, and squash. Uh, so he, uh, he 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 went through his personal life and his professional life with the same uh, steely determination he had about both. But he's also very amusing. And of course, you haven't mentioned his art. So he actually took a lot of a lot of uh, pleasure and pride in in being being a very good artist, particularly painting painting flowers and, uh, and stills. Um, so that was uh, another side to his personality. A multi-talented uh, man, highly competitive, who, who undoubtedly uh, had a hand in saving many, many lives. Uh, Professor John Walwick, uh, thank you so much for giving us your time and helping us remember uh, the incredible life of Sir Roy Calm uh, there.